Good morning, Paul. Today is Monday, October 16th, and here's the heads-up brief for today. Today's production to our clients consisted of a total of 82 issues. In East Asia Pacific, we covered 40 issues. In South Asia, 27 issues, along with 15 issues in the EMEA region. Paul, I will be briefing you on the major issues of today's production. Please, mate, go ahead. Starting with East Asia Pacific, here are the top three issues for your attention. In PNG, the Barrick Gold Corporation has received approval to resume operations at the Porgera Gold Mine in Inga province. All parties involved signed the Special Mining Lease 13 Agreement along with other contracts and agreements on, on October 13th. According to Prime Minister James Marape, the mine will commence operations by the end of this year with full production expected within the first six months. Uh, also, operations will formally commence after the conclusion of the final compensation agreement for landowners. Paul, we covered this as the major development in our Australasia Roundup today. Okay, excellent. Um, what's just note the pronunciation is Paul Gura. Paul Gura. Okay, now this is really interesting. There's another major project wait, waiting in the wings a, a, a new startup, uh, Wafi Gulp, who it's a uh, an extension of the Hidden Valley, so a new resource, but an established company there. So hopefully the government, which is very limited in its ability to do major negotiations, hopefully now it can head down getting Wafi Gulp and a couple of other projects off the ground, because if they don't, they're going to be a failed state. They are lacking the government um, um Sorry, the government's lacking ability to do what really should be done concurrently. They're doing it sort of, they're eating an elephant one at a time, but by the time they eat the elephant, the elephant could rot. <laughs> so thank you for, for that. I'll go and look at you for um, That's well for noted, Paul. Tar. In Thailand, around 50 activists belonging to the Assembly of the Poor held a rally from the Ministry of Education building to the Makawan Rangsan Bridge in Bangkok. The rally uh, is, uh, the, sorry, local authorities have installed barricades to prevent the protesters from moving towards uh, the bridge. Paul, we informed our clients in Bangkok about the situation in an advisory message earlier today. Yeah, look, what I think is really important, Bansal, is when we're advising, advising clients, we can't just purely look at the distance from their office. We also need to look at whether it's going to affect the uh, fulcrums in the in the sky train movements, the road movements to and from work, the sky train, the MRT, and the road points as well. A lot of these areas where they conduct the demonstrations, this one's fairly innocuous. So it doesn't really have any impact really to any of our clients. Whereas other locations like Ratchaprasong or the Asok area are very disruptive and potentially not only disruptive, dangerous, given the ability for uh, protest groups to utilise traditionally grenades and other ways of creating dramas and also the adversaries to those demonstrating do the same. So just really perhaps have a chat with the team. Impact's not all about distance. It's, it's all about disruption, okay? Okay, Paul, that's well noted. Thank you. Uh, in Indonesia, the Constitutional Court today rejected the judicial review request of a law concerning general elections, which stipulates the minimum age limit for presidential and vice presidential candidates. The proposal was to lower the age limit for uh, presidential and vice presidential candidates to 35 years from the original 40 years. Um, several demonstrators were observed gathering at the horse statue in Jakarta this morning. It is expected that demonstrations will take place uh, today against the decision. Uh, Paul, we released an APAC advisory on this today. Yeah, look, I haven't had a chance to read it, but this is very interesting. It's really what this request is about is political shenanigans by the by the elite. Um, is it a plutocracy? Certainly not a democracy. However, this is a great fundamental in. Indonesia, a rare thing, the constitutional court stepped in and said, we're not, we're not going to change that. This is particularly because Wadodo's son's the guy that they're trying to get a change for so that he can continue to be an influential past president for agendas that have nothing to do with the democracy of the country and all of our power and money for 
he and he and his cronies. So he's been particularly disappointing in how he's transitioning out of power. But the Constitutional Court has been surprisingly pleasant in that finding. I wasn't expecting that. Thank you. Sure, Paul. In South Asia, here are, here are the top two issues for your attention. In Pakistan, the Pakistan Tehrik e Insaf Party has decided to postpone a planned rally in the Liberty Choke area of Lahore, Punjab province, from October 15th to October 19th. Uh, the rally will be held to express solidarity with the Palestinian community in the Gaza Strip and against Israel. Um, the, the decision to postpone the rally comes after local authorities in Lahore refused to grant permission for the event, citing the possibility of vandalism and civil unrest. Paul, we covered this as the major development in our South Asia roundup today. Yeah, excellent. I look forward to reading that. But just to go into a little bit more detail while I have you, um, yes, um, of course, Lahore is going to refuse on the basis of vandalism and civil unrest and I don't think they're going to then allow it to be delayed and then given approval. Um, what's our read on what the PDI party is likely to do is their next move? Well, uh, it will probably uh, conduct the, the, uh, the rally on October 19th. Uh, however, the past rallies, Paul, have been uh, filled with uh, unrest and uh, there were clashes between security forces and the protesters. So this uh, Palestinian-Israeli issue has been uh, highly controversial in the country. Sure, but I mean, what, what we're failing to get there is on the 19th, what are the, what are the chances it's going to be given permission to hold the event. I think that's yeah, pretty remote, or did they approve it for the 19th so they could get security apparatus prepared for it? It, it hasn't been approved yet for the 19th, but they, uh, they've postponed it so that they can get uh, an approval. But until now, there's no approval yet. Okay, so what I'm saying is we need to drill in on that. It wouldn't make sense that the law is going to say, okay, but you can have it on... on, on Friday instead, okay. Okay, sure, Paul. Uh, in the part so, what the, so what I'm saying, yes, we, we've got to dig behind the words, okay? Okay, the Lahore is not going to the Lahore authority is not going to come out and go, "Are you mad?" And the PDI are obviously running a PR campaign, so there's a couple of outcomes that we need to see as unfolding, so that we can actually predict impacts. And either they're going to go ahead without permission or they're going to be given permission, but given very tight security arrangements so that you know, repressive controls can ensure it doesn't get out of hand. So neither option are good. We need to be on top of it and thinking preemptively, not just following polite words coming out of the PDI or the Lahore um, government offices, okay? Yes, sure, Paul. I will discuss this with the team, for sure. In uh, Nepal, the armed police force has mobilized more than 29,000 security personnel under the festival special security plan ahead of the festival season. Uh, these APF personnel will be stationed at the main transit points and key areas to ensure security during the festivals. Well, again, traditionally they haven't. They haven't been able to ensure security. So again, it's something that we need to see the difference between the public relations statements versus the so realities. The dangers of people, clients attending these, be it on leave or not on leave, um, mm. is irrelevant. Precarious liability laws for a lot of our clients, if people are already in Nepal or nearby in, in India or elsewhere and want to go to these festivals, they need to understand the dangers. And when you have lines come out of countries like Nepal, Indonesia, we're going to deploy personnel to ensure security or we're bolstering security. Another way to look at it is we've had a lot of problems in the past and we're trying to appease our bosses that we can control it, but societal issues prevent that. So we need to be really drilling in on beyond these PR statements to what it means. We also need to understand the precarious liability laws. If clients allow somebody to go a festival in in, in Nepal and they're on a business trip in India, even though you approve them to go on the leave, you still hold vicarious liability responsibilities. So 
obviously our clients tend to understand that, but our analysts need to understand that too. And, and then we need to be digging beyond that um, public relations appeasement statements made, okay? Yes, well, for sure. Cheers. Moving uh, in EMEA, uh, I'll brief you on the top two issues of our production. Um, in Europe, several demonstrations in support of Palestine were carried out in major cities and capitals across uh, the continent in the past couple of days. Uh, this includes protests in countries like Belgium, England, France, Germany, Italy, and Greece. Uh, Paul, we covered this as the major development in our EMEA roundup today. We also conveyed this to our clients in EMEA via an advisory message today as well. Okay, excellent. Uh, concerning the Israeli-Palestinian issues, around uh, 2,400 Palestinians and 1,300 Israelis have been killed. Approximately 10,800 Palestinians and 1,300 others have been injured. At least a million Palestinians have been displaced in Gaza. Today, Hezbollah released a video targeting Israeli soldiers and Merkava tanks with anti-tank guided missiles. Uh, Paul, we communicated this to our EMEA clients via an advisory message today. We also released an assessment on this on Friday. Yeah, fantastic. And of course, I was dealing with it over the weekend. But what we also have to be cognizant of is the chance for escalation involving um, you know, potentially Iran, potentially a greater involvement from Hezbollah. The problem we're now having is mixed signals coming out of the global leader, America, where their initial response was to, to pull troops from elsewhere and off exercises and get aircraft carriers and send them there and tell Iran not to get involved and Israel asking for special upgrades to weapons supplies from the states and America telling everybody that they they don't want an escalation of war but in trying to either show us display a show of strength to deter it um, that may be perceived by American planners to be what they're doing but the reality is it's antagonistic and it's more likely to escalate issues and it's also sending a very mixed signal like, hey, guys, don't do anything, but let us prepare in case we want to do anything. We have the upper hand. So this is potentially going to be yet another escalation of the propensity for wars to kick off and people not to understand the ramifications of them, but everybody blindly goes into them. So... We really need to understand the geopolitical issues pertaining to that more so because even though America thinks it can, it, and, and even though their key spokesmen are going, we can fight another war on another front, really, you're not doing real well in the Ukraine, you're not even there. And so if you had people going home in body bags, but if you can't supply basic items like 155 millimeter artillery shells, to, to Ukraine, then I really don't think you're going to be able to fight on another front. You can, as they keep quoting, we can project a force concurrently. Yeah, but you can't actually fight on the ground. And wars are one on the ground. And I don't know how many wars sort of NATO, America, Europe thinks they want to have and lose before they learn what pretty much every basic infantryman knows. And that's you don't win a by talking on soapboxes, you actually have to be on the ground shooting, shooting people in the head and getting shot at. Okay, mate, anything else from your end? Nothing from my end, Paul. Thank you. All right. Beautiful, Basil. Thanks, mate. Cheers.